Jesus. Hey guys, um, so this is for lecture two, and the question that I am going to be answering is, what was the prop in the hyperreal classroom um, that Nathan recorded, and what did it communicate? So, from watching um, the whole lecture in that section, I watched it about uh, two times, although I knew what the prop was, I wanted to make sure um, that I could explain why I thought that was the prop and whatsoever. So the prop was the train. And the reason why I feel as though the prop was the, tra was the train was because he brought an, uh, an emphasis on the train. Um, although he mentioned it in the beginning of the video, saying that he was at home, you know, a train can go past. It's a different feeling when you're at home and a train goes past than being outside looking up and there's a train going past. Um, the added addition of the train to the video, it um, brought in a like theatrical feel. It made it way more dramatized along with him standing under a light post which provided dramatic lighting to it and also kind of made the emphasis of how real it was. Like, he wasn't making up a train or it wasn't a train sound on TV. He was actually feet from a train. Um, the way he positions himself under the light post with the, the train in the background, it kind of allowed himself to kind of paint himself in the environment. So he was in a grungy environment and he was there. So it kind of like made him the foreground while the train um being emphasized was the background. Um, in terms of how the train um, had the perception on the video section itself, it, like I said before, it made it, um, it allowed me to know that it was real um, versus the next section where he posed props in the same notion using props like the train was but he posed them as he said like the books wouldn't be stacked the way they were um, or the paint would be up. He posed them to tell a story just as well as the prop told the story except the stories were different. It's kind of like reality versus non-reality um, rea or reality versus perceived reality you know because that could have been a in the second scene that could have been a stage, like it could have been real, but because we know that that's not ha not how um, it will be laid out in his home, it's kind of like a perceived reality. Um, essentially, the use of the props and the use of the chain, as, the train as a prop, it kind of set the stage. It set the stage for the film. Um, we know that he went outside because of the train. Um, it wasn't because of the real rat sign that he pointed to or because of the echoes and the noise of the outside, but it was because he wanted to use that train and the noise, the rattling um, of it to show um, realism of the action video. Essentially, props, like I said before, they're kind of used to either promote real, not promote real, but promote reality or fake reality as he talks about in the second scene. Um, if you guys have any questions you can post them in my blog. I'm going to post my follow-up question for next week to, for you guys in my blog as well. Talk to you in the next video.